Hi everyone, I'm Rongxin from Hunan University, and it's my pleasure to introduce our latest work in blockchain-based federated learning, Fire BFL. So in the first few slides, let me explain the background of federated learning and blockchain-based federated learning. So as all of you know, Federated learning uses numbers of clients to jointly train a model without sharing data. The most fundamental algorithm for federated learning is fed averaging, as shown in this figure. Clients collect the data from the environment and train their model locally to get local gradients. And the clients upload these local gradients to a central server which computes a global update by simply averaging these local gradients and then sends it to the clients. Finally, the clients use the global update to refresh their local model. So when we look at the whole process of vanilla FL, we can see that it faces some challenges. First of all, its network architecture is one to many meaning that when a central server stops running, the whole system will fail. This is called a single point of failure. Also, we can find that there is no incentive mechanism for Valina FL. It assumes that clients voluntarily participate in the learning process. However, in the real world, many clients, especially those holding large amount of data, may leave this system because they have no rewards. And Valina FL also assumes that clients are honest and does not consider the possibility of malicious attacks. For example, some malicious clients will upload fake gradients to attack global model. So due to these challenges, some researchers have proposed a blockchain-based federated learning framework. So let me explain what is blockchain-based federated learning. Basically, blockchain-based federated learning uses blockchain to realize decentralization and the incentives for FL. Specifically, a peer-to-peer -peer network replaces a one-to-many network where many miners play in the role of central server, and even if some of them are not working, others will support the whole system to continue running, thus avoiding SPOF. At the same time, blockchain allows using some virtual currencies, therefore can provide an incentive mechanism. In this figure, you can see a Valina BFL framework, which was proposed in our previous work. The workflow of this system is divided into three steps. The first step is local model update. The second step is cross-validate between miners. And the third step is block generation and propagation. We call this framework and many similar models out there the Valina BFL because they share several points of the same essence. The first common thing in Valina BFL is that they are all loosely copied, which means that blockchain is always running, but the FL process may be not continuous. Imagine the FL process is over, but the blockchain is still running. The miners need to generate new blocks. Unfortunately, there are no local gradients that can be packed into blocks. Thus, will create many empty blocks. Thus, bring performance change. Second, Valina BFL record all local gradients to the blockchain, which means if a client, which may be malicious, is curious about the local gradients of other clients, 
it can easily read this information from the blockchain. So in this case, Valina BFL is actually a wet box. This is very dangerous because there have been a lot of work prove that malicious clients can launch a variety of privacy attacks in this case. For example, member inference attack and even model inversion attack. Also, Valina BFL do not verify that if a local gradient is fake. All these things make it difficult to resist malicious attack. Third, nearly all Valina BFL frameworks distribute rewards based on client's local data set. We believe that the client should not disclose any other information except for local gradients. And that revealing their local data sets violate FL privacy guidelines. And in the non-IID case, the data set does not fully reflect a client's contribution to the learning process because the data distribution is not the same. It's not fair to distribute rewards based on data set in a heterogeneous environment. More importantly, in Valina BFL, the clients need to report the local data set by themselves, which means some clients would cheat to get more rewards. In conclusion, under these assumptions and settings, Valina BFL face challenges in privacy, malicious attack, privacy, and fairness. So in this article, we hope to slow these outstanding issues in Valina BFL, and therefore, we need to address three research problems. The first research problem is how to enhance the cost-effective and privacy preserving capability by design in BFL. Because as mentioned earlier, the Valina BFL is designed as a loosely coupled white box model that faces performance and privacy challenges. So what we are trying to do here is to design that the BFL into a tightly coupled black box model. The solution in this article is coordinating the working state of FL and blockchain and do not require the local gradients in blockchain. The second research problem is how to design an incentive mechanism based on client's contribution rather than local data sets to distribute rewards more fairly in heterogeneous environments and uh, without violating FL's privacy guidelines. And the solution is uh, evaluating contributions only using local gradients. Furthermore, calculating the contribution value of each client, then we can use this value to distribute uh, rewards and even perform global aggregation. The third research problem is how to develop a secure BFL to resist malicious attacks. To this end, we need to find a way to identify which clients are malicious. In this article, we use clustering algorithms to discover differences in contribution between clients. And as you know, clustering algorithms can also discover outliers so our proposed method can naturally resist malicious attacks. Next, let me explain in detail the solutions for these three research problems in this article. For the first research problem, we looked at the entire Valina BFL process and found that performance and privacy changes can be alleviated by two new insights. The first insight is we can tightly couple the blockchain and FL, as shown in this figure. You can see that 
when the blockchain and the FL are tightly coupled, the working state of both are fully synchronized. They will start and stop at the same time, thus avoiding the empty blocks and the blockchain forking, and therefore improve performance by design. The second insight is we should bound in the data scope of blocks, which means the miners only pack global updates into the block rather than all of local gradients. As a result, the system changes from a white box to a black box, which means no client can observe the other client's local gradients over time, as shown in this figure. When BFL is a white box, an attacker can trace the local gradients of client I from the blockchain and then construct an adversarial dataset. By using this dataset, the attack model can even get the inverse model of client I directly. In case the system is black box, the attacker cannot construct an adversarial dataset against the client I and therefore cannot perform a model inversion attack. So using this insight, FireBFL ensures privacy by design. Moreover, considering the possibility of another malicious attack, namely member inference attack, which in this case, the attacker have to modify its local gradient and then observe the change of global updates we designed a class-based contribution identifying method not only to objectively evaluate the client's contribution to the learning process, but also to naturally discarding fake gradients from malicious nodes. So let me explain our contribution-based incentive mechanism. The key idea is to use a clustering algorithm to find differences in local gradients. The intention based on two observations. First, the gradients contain information. Second, the fake gradients differ from the normal ones. For example, they are far away from the normal ones in distance. You can find these details in Milad's work. Not that FireBFL allows you to use any clustering algorithms, but here, let me use DeepScan as an example, as shown in this figure. First, we use Fed Average to compute a global gradient and put it together with all the local gradients of the current round, then perform a clustering. You can see that DeepScan divides the local gradients into different uh, clusters. So those clients that belong to the same cluster as the global gradient, we can say that they contribute more to the learning process. For example, the yellow points, clients that do not belong to the same cluster as the global gradient, we can consider them as low contributing. For example, green and purple points, Furthermore, we use the cosine distance to measure a client's contribution and finally calculate the contribution value of client I in current round by proportion, as shown in this equation. As you know, this value is between 0 and 1. In order to distribute rewards, it's common to set a base value, for example, 100. So we use the client's contribution value multiplied by base value to get the final reward. As mentioned before, in FireBFL, contributions are evaluated by local gradients rather than data size, thus can avoid cheating. Also, we employ a discarding storage, that is discarding the low contributing local gradients and use only the high contributing local gradients to compute the global update. For example, in this figure, we use only the yellow points for global aggregation. Again, the fake gradients are far away from the normal ones, 
so they are classified to low contribution, such as power points. By discarding the low contributing local gradients, Fire BFL can defend against malicious attack in the black box case. Based on this, we propose a new aggregation method to alleviate the fairness challenges in heterogeneous environment. So Feather Average, which is used in Valina BFL, it simply average all local gradients, meaning that it assumes that the contributions of all clients are equal. However, in the case of heterogeneous environment, this may not be true. Thus, our method, fire aggregation, employs weighted average, as shown in this equation. Widths are assigned to each client, and the width is the contribution values of clients, which means the clients with higher contributions get higher widths. This is beneficial for speed up model convergence, and it can alleviate the impact can use by strugglers. So far, I have introduced how Fire BFL addresses the three research problems in this article. Now, let me show the system overview of Fire BFL. And in this figure, you can see that we divide the workflow of Fire BFL into five procedures. Procedure one is local learning and update, just like Valina BFL does. Procedure two is uploading the gradients for many. Note that in this procedure, we use the RSA algorithm, a commonly used encryption algorithm to protect the security. Procedure 3 is minus exchange gradients. In Valina BFL, this procedure also called cross-validation. And procedure 4 is computing global updates, in which we use contribution-based incentive mechanism and fair aggregation. Finally, procedure 5 is block mining and consensus. Here, the miners pack only global updates into blocks instead of all local gradients. It's in set 2, if you remember. Note that throughout the process, in set 1 is fundamental. And by modular design, Fire BFL offers unprecedented flexibility. Fire BFL becomes the pure blockchain when we use only procedure 2, 3, and 5. Fire BFL becomes pure FL when we use only procedures 1, 2, and 4. This means the adapters can dynamically choose the downgrade version to save costs according to their business needs. So let me quickly show you some experimental results that were pretty interesting. In these two plots, we are comparing the average delay and the average accuracy of RBFL with pure blockchain, fed average, and fed proofs. We can see that fire BFL has lower latency than pure blockchain and almost the same performance as fed average. But when we adopt the discarding strategy, the latency of fire BFL is almost the same as fed average while converging faster and with higher accuracy compared to baseline, which means the fair BFL can achieve lower latency and better performance. We also observed the ability of fair BFL to resist malicious attacks. And in this table, you can see that fair BFL can identify fake gradients by contribution-based incentive mechanism, both in the case of IID and non-IID. And we can find that Fair BFL has greater robustness when there are few malicious clients. For, for example, these rows, 
the accuracy can always reach the 100%. And if we look at the moving averaging detection rate, for example, this figure, we can find that the detection rate increases with the convergence of the model, especially in non iid case. Therefore, fair BFR with discarding storage can naturally resist malicious attack. So this is our latest work in blockchain-based federated learning, fair BFR. Thanks for listening.